Hi people and welcome to Javailable Tutorials. Today we will talk about basic serialization and deserialization concepts and show you an example of saving an object from your program to a text file. What exactly is serialization and deserialization? Let's assume that this over here is your application. You have an employee object that you want to persist in a file or send over a network to another application. In order that to happen, you have to serialize your employee object into a byte stream. What is a byte stream? A sequence of zeros and ones. You have to serialize that employee object, send it over the network to another application or send it to a file system and persist it in a text file. The deserialization process is exactly the opposite. So when you receive a byte stream, you deserialize that byte stream into a Java object. That's the whole concept of serialization and deserialization. I think it will be better idea to um, make a sample application so you can um, so you can really see how the things work. Let's head over to IntelliJ. Let's make uh, let's say employee class. Let's say our employee will have ID, will have name, and we have department, we have age. Let's add some getters and setters. Let's add uh, all argument constructor. It will be easier for us to operate th with that pojo. Okay. So we have our employee object created. We have a boilerplate code generated. But but this object is still not eligible for serialization. What we need to do is we have to implement the serializable marker interface. What is a marker interface? A marker interface is an interface that doesn't contain any methods. It just marks that the given class is eligible for serialization. As you can see, the serializable interface doesn't have any methods. So now employee is eligible for serialization. In order uh, to have something meaningful uh, persisted in, our, uh, in the text file, we have to generate the to we have to override the toString method from uh, our superclassed object. Okay, now we're ready to go. This object is ready for serialization. Let's head over and prepare the stage for serializing the employee object. We will use a print stream object and it wants the file name that we are going to persist in. So I have a employees.txt file opened and ready. We have to give the path to it. Here I'm giving the full path. You can give relative one. Okay, so we have an handled exception. We can catch it because it's checked. What was it? It was found, not found. Exception. And we can print the stack trees. So we will not throw any exceptions. Okay, now we call print stream dot print and we take the overload with an object and we make new employee, let's say one John, let's say sales department and let's say 25. Okay, our employee John is ready to get serialized into a byte stream and taken to this file over here, employees file, let's fire up the program and see what happens. Okay, process finished with exit code 0. 
let's check our file and our file has um, the employee object persisted as we see okay guys I hope to you like the tutorial make sure you subscribe it's available for more videos and take care